Um, you guys already talked a little bit in the warm up about slope. Um, we're going to do a little bit of slope intercept at the end of the lesson today. Um, for the most part, we're going to talk about slope kind of in isolation. All right, we're going to talk about, we're going to focus on two ways that we can, we'll be given something and we have to find slope. All right, we'll talk about two ways we can do that. Um, we're going to look at the end of the lesson at a, some, um, some equations in slope-intercept form. We're not going to have to graph them. All we're going to have to do is just identify a couple things based off of slope-intercept form. All right? Um, so you guys talked in the warm-up, what is slope? What does slope do? Why is slope important? Can anybody tell me? Ms. Taylor, this, Ms. Taylor, this talked about in an example he just gave you. I'm going to go over. Chris? Making, making wheelchair ramps. Yeah. So why is why is slope important? So people using a wheelchair don't like fall. Okay. So you want you want to make sure you get you want to make sure you get the pitch correct when you build that ramp. All right. So slope, guys. Again, big thing of slope is the rate of change between any two points on a line. Right, so the rate of change, so you guys have on your notes where it says you have slope is, you just have to write it in what's in, uh, underlined in bold. The rate of change between any two points. Now it's a straight, like we just showed you guys, it's a straight line. So is that rate of change going to be different anywhere on that line? No. No, not even. The word for that is constant. All right? Just like when we looked at a linear equation. You guys remember the rule when we gave you, we gave you the chart, and we asked you if it was a linear function or not? Does anybody remember when we had to look at to figure out whether it was a linear function or not? I know it was a couple weeks ago before the double shot we gave remember? The pattern. the pattern, right? Again, X or Y had to increase or decrease by the same number. Y had to increase or decrease by the same number. That's what makes it constant. Because slope-intercept form is a linear function, all right? It's constant, right? It's increasing by the same thing. That's what slope is. It increases by the same thing. It doesn't change. It's constant, all right? Slope's going to measure the steepness of the line, how steep it is, how much pitch it has, all right? So slope measures the steepness of a line. All right, so slope measures steepness of a, of a line. Now, like I told you guys, We're going to find slope two ways, and you guys have it on your thing, right? So first the way we're going to do it is we're going to give you a graph. We're going to ask you to look at the graph and ask you to find the slope, all right? So you guys have a little box on your notes where it says give it a graph, all right? If I gave you a like a fraction, something over something, right? Does anybody remember anything about slope when we say something over something? Right. Exactly. So on your note sheet, if we give you a graph, that's right. We're looking, again, you don't have to do any, you don't have to plug any numbers in. There's no type of formula for this. You're just going to figure out the rise over the run. So what does rise mean? What direction are you going? Up, right? If it's positive, you go up. What if it's negative? You go down, right? So on your thing, on your note, your guided notes, again, if you're moving right, that means, um, sorry, this should be, should be the other way around. This should say moving.
All right, so if you're moving up, it's going to be positive. If you're moving down, it's going to be negative. And then your run, that's right or left. If you're moving right, it's positive. If you're moving left, it's negative. When we do these guys, chances are you're never going to go down and to the left. All right? You're either going up to the right or down to the right. We're trying to figure out the slope. And again, you're going to have those little lines that go through the numbers on the x and y axis, like the grid. All you're going to do is count those lines. Again, there's no, you don't have to plug in any numbers. There's no addition or subtraction. You're just going to be able to count. We're also going to ask you, when we do it based on a graph, we're going to ask you to identify what type of slope it is. We're going to talk about that in a second. So if you're given a graph, we're looking at rise over run. Just make sure you know what the, whatever direction you go, make sure you know whether it's positive, whether it's negative. All right? So that's given a graph. All right? We can also give you coordinates, or like I showed you guys at the beginning of the lesson. We can give you a table, like we talked about with the linear, the linear functions. We can give you that too. Chances are more times than not this week, guys, you're going to see this. You're going to see the table. But it could work given coordinates. We can say negative 2, comma 3, 5, comma 4. We can give you a set of coordinates. Again, now there's no picture. You're just given coordinates. All right? Does anybody know the formula to find just... I don't, I don't want to know why equals mx plus b. The formula just to find the slope. Slope only. Matt? m equals x2 minus x1 over y2 minus... Or no, it's y2 minus y1 on top of x2 minus... Y2. Perfect. Nice job, Matt. So like Matt just said, there's your formula right there. So on your notes, you have the line, you have the fraction line. On the top, you want to write y2 minus y1. On the bottom of that line, you want to write x2 minus x1. Done? Why is y2 first? Because y is your, remember, it's rise over run. The y-axis is vertical. You want to go up or down first. And then your x, your x is your right or left. It's right, still rise over run, so your, your y... Your y's go up and down, your x's go left and right. That's a good question. All right? So again, here's your formula. All right? Okay, cool. So these are your coordinates. All right? So if I was looking at, and you don't have to write this down, but if I was looking at these two ordered pairs, I would label negative 2 as x1, 3 as y1, 5 is x2, 4 is y2. That's how I would label it. All right? Now, you can flip it around and do it the other way. You could do y1 minus y2, x1 minus x2. That's fine. You're just going to make sure you're consistent. All right? You can't do, all right, like for the y, say if I want to do, say if I want to do, I did y1 minus y2. That's fine. 3 minus 4. That's my y1. That's my y2. Over. Look what I did in the bottom, though. I got x2 minus x1. You have to be consistent. If you're using the first y coordinate on the top, you've got to use the first x coordinate on the bottom. If you're using the first, using the second y coordinate on top, you're going to make sure you're using the second x coordinate in the bottom. You're just going to be consistent when you do that. All right, you can't bounce back and forth. All right? So, yeah, it's, this is the fun. And, guys, notice this is a good example because the minus signs are part of the formula. So if one of your x's or your y's is negative, it just doesn't take the place of that negative sign. You're going to put two negatives in a row. And then when I go to solve, what's going to happen here? What should I do? Yeah, this becomes plus. So keep that in mind. The negative sign, the minus sign, is part of the formula. So you may have two negatives in a row that you have to make positive. Just keep that in mind. All right? Down we go. 
So just some steps when you're doing this, guys. And these steps aren't super long, all right? First thing you want to do, like I did, bef like I did up here with my coordinates that I gave you, I want to label, all right? X1, comma Y1, and X2, comma Y2. Right? I would suggest labeling them. But like I said, you can do Y1 minus Y2, X2 minus, sorry. X1 minus X2. You can do that as long as you're consistent with how you make, as long as you're consistent with what you use. All right? So you want to label first. Next thing you want to do, like I did with this, plug them into the formula. You may get two negatives in a row. You're not doing it wrong. Remember, just because with one of your X, your second X or Y that you plug in there is negative, if this doesn't take the place of the negative that's there, you'll have two in a row. You're just going to make sure that you make them make that positive when you go to solve. All right, so plug your numbers into your formula. Next thing, solve. So make sure if you have two negatives in a row, make sure you make the two negatives a plus and then just do the math. So it makes you understand if you have two, if you have like negative two minus three, it's going to be negative five. Remember, we keep the sign and add the numbers together. All right? You want to solve. Last thing, you may not have this in every one of these that you do, but you want to simplify. So say if I had negative two over six, how would I simplify that? What would that simplify to? Anybody know? What number goes into both? Um, uh, two. Two goes into both, right? So I'm going to divide the top and the bottom by two. Or would, it be, would it be three? Wouldn't be three. If it was like, I mean, if it was like this. Six over negative two. Would be if it was six over negative two, okay. it would simplify to negative three. Then, would it be? So it's going to stay, it's going to stay negative. negative one. All right, so make sure with these, when you get to the end, make sure you simplify. All right, if the, look and see if the number on the top is bigger than the number on the bottom, see if the number on the bottom can win the number on the top evenly. All right, if you have a regular this proper fraction where the number on the top is smaller than the number on the bottom, just see if there's one number that can win the both. All right, so make sure you simplify. All right, so that's the two ways we're going to look at. We're going to look at it based on graph. All right, we're going to look at it based on giving you guys some coordinates or a table. All right? Now, there's different ways. You can, remember what we're going to do right now, guys, is you'll be able to look at a graph. You know, like the directions will say, describe the slope of a line. When it says describe the slope of a line, we're going to give you the four choices that you can have to describe it. All right? First one, got to be a positive slope. Again, if you want to write the line rises from the left to the right, you can. You don't have to. Biggest thing I want you to put down is on the top of your, on the top of your blank graph, write positive slope, and then draw a line that's going up to the right. Okay, I want you to draw a line. I don't care. It doesn't have to be exactly like this, but as long as your line, your slope is going up to the right, so you know that it's positive. All right, if I scroll down a little bit, if I, if, I, if I ask you to find slope based on the graph, first off, if you're describing the slope, you would say it's positive, and then to find it, you would count, we'll give you two coordinates, count from the coordinate on the bottom, go up until you get to the line, this makes more sense when we do the examples, but count up to the line that the other coordinates on, stop. Once you get to that line, the other coordinates on. That's the top number of your slope. That's your rise. Then you're going to count over to the right. That's going to be your run. Whatever. Maybe it might be 6 over 2. It can simplify for you. Use of question. For, for it to, always, like, to be positive, does it always rise from like, the left to the right? It has to go left to the right. Yes, it has to. Because again, it's going from, these are negative numbers down here. These are positive numbers up in this quadrant. It's going from the negative numbers 
up into the positive numbers. So yes, Yusuf, you're correct. It's always going to go up to the right. All right? Always, always, always. There's no exceptions. Neg so if positive goes left to right, what about negative? Right to, right to left. So there's your negative, right? The line falls from left to right, or it goes down to the right. I always base, when I'm looking at slope, I always base it on going to the right. Positive up to the right, negative down to the right. I always base it on going to the right. And then to count, to find your slope, you're going to count, same deal. Go down now because it's negative, right? So I'm going to go find the coordinate that they give me on the line. I'll count down until I get to the line that the other coordinates are. That's the top number in my fraction. So it'll be negative whatever number I get when I count. Then I'll go to the right, however many it is, I'll write that on the bottom. You're always going to start with slope as a fraction. Then if you can simplify it, you'll simplify it. If you can't, just leave it like how it is. All right? Here's your slope of zero. It's just a horizontal line going across. So for positive and negative, you can describe it and also give us a number for the slope. All right? Positive. Slope of negative 2. I'm sorry, slope of 2. Negative slope. Negative slope of negative 2 over 3. So there's two parts when it's positive or negative. The slope, what type it is, positive or negative, and the actual number of the slope. Zero, you this, there's only one answer, it's zero. You're describing it as zero, and the slope is zero. A little trick I remember, you don't have to write this down, but if I drew a couple lines here, a couple imaginary lines, it makes a Z. Z, zero. That's one way to remember. Okay? So there's your slope of zero. Then you, so if slope of zero is horizontal, undefined is going to be what? Vertical, up and down. There it is. So, again, same deal for undefined. You're describing it as undefined, and there's nothing you can find for the slope. The slope is undefined. You're done. All right? So these are, these are the quick and easy ones. Horizontal, zero. Done. Up and down, all right? Vertical, undefined. Done. These take a little more work because we have to say it's positive or negative, then you've got to count and simplify if you need to. All right? My trick for undefined, again, if I drew a little imaginary line here, imaginary line there, it makes a U. U for undefined. And again, some of you guys might just say, yeah, I know that's zero. That's fine. That's this whole trick. All right? So again, those are the different types of slopes you can have. Let's look at a couple examples. So on your notes, you guys have the graphs. When I'm making you draw the graphs, you already have them. All right? So directions. Say, describe the slope of the line, then find the slope. So what does that mean, describe the slope of the line? Can someone tell me? What's that mean? Batman? To see if it's positive, negative, zero, or undefined. Again, that's why we just gave you all those choices. When it says describe the slope of the line, that's what we want to do. Positive, negative, zero, undefined. This one. Yusuf? Positive. All right, I figured out what it is. Now, how do we say to count to figure out the slope if it's positive? How do we say to count? Up, right, to the right. Again, I'm going to count up until I get to where? The line that the other coordinates on. One, two, three, four, five. I'm going to write five. Again, let's put this off to the side. Because I don't I'm gonna kind of put it off to the side because I may have to simplify. So I'm just gonna put it there to the side, and there's my top number. I ended here. Now I'm gonna count to the right until I end up on the other coordinate. One, two, three, four, five. So my slope 
5 over 5. Can that be simplified? Yeah. To what? To 1. one. There's my slope. And look at it. If I go up 1 over 1, I'm going to end up on the line. Up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1, up 1. I end up on the line every time. Like a staircase. Like a staircase. Right. So my slope positive, then my slope is 1. So again, on the test, if it's multiple choice, those are what your choice is going to look like. It's going to say positive, negative, 0, undefined. There'll be a little semicolon, and there'll be a number. If it's positive or undefined, it'll just say positive, undefined. There'll be no number. All right? So that's your answer for this one. Positive, and then my slope is 1. Um, how about example 1B? Yusuf? Zero, right? Again, it's going horizontal. Like I saw, I saw Yusuf turn around and look back on his choices. That's fine, right? And I'll mistake and I'll make sure that when we give you when we do the um, reference sheet, there'll be a spot that have the different types of slope. So all this is is zero. That's a, this is two for one because it's the slope is zero and it's described as zero. Go ahead, put one. Go ahead, put one answer. Say again. So would it be negative? No, nope, just zero. Just zero. That's your answer. That's it. Okay. Zero undefined or just zero undefined? There's no more than that. All right? This one, 2A. Describe the slope of the line, then find the slope. Bethany, what do you think? <coughs> negative, right? Good. Because it's down to the right. Negative. Now, to find a negative slope based on what we wrote in our notes, how do I have to count? Um, if it's positive, I want to count up. Now, you, let me say, use is not wrong. You could count up and then over. But you just got to remember that, because I'm, I'm thinking I'm counting up, so I'm positive. So I, that kind of confuses me. So when I do it, I want to count down. So when I count down first, I know I'm negative. But you're not wrong going up to the left. You just got to remember to make sure you know you're going in a negative direction. All right? So I'm going to count down and to the right. So I'm going to go down until, like I said, I end up that on the line, on the grid line that my other coordinates are. One, two, three, four. Make sure I put it negative. I went down for one, two, three, four. I went over one, two, three. Done, yes or no? Yes. Matt, you say no? Yeah. Yes. What? Well, I can simplify negative four over three, okay. What number goes into both? One. The side is one. Zero. Side is zero. Is there any number bigger than one that can win the both? No. No. That's my slope. Now, what if it was this? Negative. Yes, you could. Yeah, that's, that would simplify to what? Negative two. Negative two. Yeah, I'm just showing you guys that. But this can't simplify. So it's going to be negative four over three. That's your answer. Remember, when it's positive or negative, when it's positive or negative, you have to do a little more work. You've got to figure out that number. Undefined is zero. It's two for one. You can just put the answer. In. This one. Matt? Undefined, undefined right? Yeah. It can, we, can make a U, we can make a U out of it. Again, when it's undefined, it's a two for one deal. So you have an example of every single type. You have an example of positive, example of negative, example of zero, example of undefined. All right? So, you go, uh, so again, like we taught, this is kind of just, uh, kind of just refreshes what we talked about at the beginning. If we're, given a, if we're given coordinates for a table. So if you're given a table of points and asked to find the slope, pick any two points and plug these into the formula. Again, what I like to do is, when I do it, I like to draw my line. Before I plug in my numbers, 
I like to draw my line and put my two minus signs. That way, all I'm going to do is plug in the numbers. That way, you'll have a situation where you have a negative for your second coordinate, and then you put it in, you just put the one negative. Remember, you may have a situation where you have two. So you want to do a couple of these? Bring you in out of the corner, right? Out of the bullpen. All right, so everybody's got that, uh, you got that formula? Yeah. All right. All right, so it says points uh, below represent uh, by a table, they're on a line. What is the slope of each line? So we got example A, B, all right. Um, so remember, you can pick any two points. What I would do is pick the two points that seem easiest. Okay, and we'll circle them right now. So anyone have a, a pair of points that they want to pick? So you can either pick the first, the second, the third, or the fourth column. Donovan? The second column. Okay, I like that because it's got a zero in it. So if I write that as a coordinate, x is three, y is zero. So I've got three, zero, and I need another one. What would be another good one, Ellie? Uh, five, negative two. Five, negative two? Okay. I guess you could do that. I mean, you could do it. Does anyone have any other thoughts? Or if you want to do that one, we can. Yeah, I like the first one because the numbers are both positive and they're small. Yeah, both sets are positive. There's nothing wrong with using the other coordinate. It's just you're going to run into some extra negatives. So we're going to use these two. You can forget about the other parts we didn't circle. We don't need them. Okay, we picked the two easiest ones. Now let's, let's label them. Um, the first number, that's always a what? An x value or a y value? You said? X. It's an x. We can make it x1 or we can make it x2. We have a choice. Doesn't matter which one you make it. So how about um, Savannah? Do you want that to be x1 or your second x? X1. x1. Right. Now that she said that's x1, we don't have any more choices. What does the zero have to be? Yeah? Y2? No, X2? Well, each coordinate has an X and a Y, so it's got to be a Y. So Y1? And it's got to be 1. Okay, the 1's have to go together. First X, first Y, so now this is going to be my second X and my second Y. That's all that x2 means. It's not like x squared. It just means my second x and my second y. Any questions on how we label that? All right. Now, can someone remind me, what's the formula that I use? We don't have to plug in yet. Just tell me what the formula is. What did the mx plus b or no? Well, it's the formula for just the m. So rise, and how do you find rise? What minus what? Y1 minus Y2. Okay, is that what it says on the other page? Yeah, but you did Y2 minus Y1. As long as you're consistent, it's okay. So Y2 minus Y1, and what goes in the bottom? X2 minus X1. Yep. So I'm saying by being consistent. If you do Y2 minus Y1 on the top, you can't do Y1. Uh, X1 minus X2 on Y. So there's the, the, the setup, like Mr. Roy was talking about, just writing everything down. Now I'm just going to put numbers in those four boxes. All right. Um, Alex, what number is going to go in the first box? All right. I'm looking at Y2. Y2 is 1. All right. Uh, Nate, what number is going to go in the second box in the top? Zero. Zero. Y1, Y1 is zero. All right, that's good. Uh, Natasha, what's going to go in the box, first box on the bottom? Well, what, what letter is in that box? Probably label as X2. Three. Which is a two. Oh, two, okay. And then the second number in the bottom, um, Yusuf? Let's see. We're looking for x1. x1 is 3. Perfect. Now we simplify. Um, Brady, what do you get when you simplify the top? Um, yeah. What, what is that? You have a dollar and you take nothing away. 
One. One. Yep. So you get one in the top. Um, and then, how about uh, Matt? What's two minus three? Negative one. Negative one. One divided by negative one. Can you simplify that? Well, yeah, but you get zero, right? You're not subtracting, though. You're dividing. <laughs> Just dividing. What is it, Chris? Would it be negative one? Yeah, it's just negative one. So if you can write the slope not as a fraction, that's fine. Negative one is perfect. If you left it as one over negative one, that's okay too. I would say if you were going to draw a picture of this, it's probably helpful to leave it as a fraction. But most of the time, if you can write the answer not as a fraction, that's how people do it. And that's it, right? Just to describe the slope. Uh, what is the slope? That's it. Negative slope. Negative one. All right, let's look at um, B. All right, so same deal. we got to pick two coordinates. we got to pick ones that are easy to work with. Any of them will work. You'll all get the same answer if you do it correctly. Brady? Uh, the fourth one. Which one? Fourth column. The fourth column. Yeah, I like that because it's a five, zero. Whenever you subtract zero, that's an easy, easy one to do. Uh, yep, Nicole? Third column. The third column. Yeah, the two and the one. I like that one because you're dealing with positives. We can kind of avoid the negatives. You might not always be able to do that. They, there might be a problem you have where there's a negative in each number. So you're going to have to deal with that. All right. So we've got our third column, which is the point two, one. My fourth column, five, comma, zero. Okay, let's label them, and then we can, um, we can plug them in. Um, Joe, what, what do you want to let the 2 be? X1. Yep. All right, so he said X1. He could have done X1. He could have said X2. He had to say an X. Right. Now that he picked that as X1, we don't have any more choices. All right. Um, so, Melanie, what would the 1 be? Y1. Yep. It's got to be a y value, and it's got to match up with the one we picked for the x. First x, first y. How about the 5 now? Yep, Gigi? X2. My second x, and the 0 is my second y. So again, like, like Mr. Roy said, I, I do the same thing. I usually just set it up. You don't have to put boxes, but if you do that, you can just see clear there's four things you need to fill in. You've got four empty boxes. All right. Um, what goes in the upper left? You can either tell me the, the letter or the number, and then we'll, we'll just figure it out. Okay? Zero. Zero. Y2 goes in the upper left. Um, how about the box in the upper right? One. Um, let's see. Y1 is one. Yep. So we got our top. Uh, Matt, you had your hand up. You want to tell me the bottom? Five. Yep. Minus two. two. Perfect. Y2 minus Y1. X2 minus X1. Let's do it out and see what we get. Um, Catherine, what's zero minus one? Uh, well, if you did one minus zero, that would be one. If this is zero, and you're taking away one, so you get a, a negative. Yeah, negative one. And the bottom, um, Jacob, how about 5 minus 2? 5 minus 2 is 3. 3, yep, good job. Negative 1 third, is there a number that goes into both of those bigger than 1? Okay. See people shaking their head, no, no, there isn't. So you're done, that's your slope. So both of these lines would slant which way? They're both negative. So, which way to the right? Like, because what direction? This is right. Down. This is right. They're both right. Down. Yeah. Yep. Like down and over to the right. Yep. They would both go down and to the right. One of them would be steeper than the other one. Okay. One of them would be a little flatter, but they both slant down to the right. All right. I think. Um, yeah, getting towards the last last thing. So slope intercept form. So what's the name of the form we talked about yesterday? 
it was like that number with x plus a number with y equals a number. You want to remember what we called that? That would have passed. That's what we're going to do right now. Yeah? Standard form. Standard form. So standard form is one way to write the equation of a line. It's okay. It's, it works well for some things, especially for, for doing stuff with intercepts. But there's another way called slope-intercept form. Um, and I think you guys have mentioned this, um, mentioned it in the warm-up to me. What's, what's the slope-intercept form? It starts out with like the y equals. Y equals mx plus b? Yep, that's the y equals mx plus b. Okay. And again, we already labeled these in the warm-up. Uh, I think Donovan told us what they were. Can someone remind me again? What's the m? And what's the B? Yep. Yeah. M is slope, and B is where it crosses the y-axis. It's your y-intercept. Yeah, so make sure you write it and make sure that the arrows that are there go under the letters they're supposed to. So what's nice about this form is it tells you, just by looking at it, where something crosses the y-axis. Okay? The kind of problems you had yesterday, you had to plug in a zero and then do out some arithmetic to figure that out. Today, you don't, all right? So this, this form is a little bit nicer, I think, when you have to draw it. Okay. And that's called slope-intercept form. So what we might have to do is sometimes you might have an equation that could be written like this, but it's not. Right? Like this, that's good. That's slope intercept form. Um, what's the slope right there that I would the one I just wrote? Um, two. two. And what's the y intercept? Six. Okay? That one's good to go. Now, what if I had something like this? Is that slope intercept form? No. No. What's supposed to be by itself in slope intercept form? Y. Y is supposed to be all alone on one side. In this case, it's not. What's preventing y from being alone? Negative the negative 3. So to get this in slope-intercept form, you've got to put this negative 3 over on the other side. And how would you do it? You would add 3. Add 3. Add 3. You get y equals 4x plus 3. Now it's in slope-intercept form. So you might have to do something like that. Okay. You could also have a number with y, like I could have put a 2 with it, and then you would have had to divide through by 2, um, but the point is you've got to get y alone. Okay. So we'll look at some examples and see if we can identify the slope and the y-intercept. Some are going to be already set up the way you need it, some you might have to fix. Okay, so the first example is 3x minus 4. y equals 3x minus 4. Is that in slope-intercept form? Yes. yes. The y is alone. The number with the x is first, and then the number without the x is at the end. That's always the order. So since it's already the way we want it, we should be able to get the slope and intercept pretty quick. What's the slope of that line? So slope and intercept are just numbers. Three. Three. Yep. I would say, guys, the x, the x is just a hint to say, hey, the number that's with me, that's a slope. Never want to write x with a slope. So slope we is have three. To identify. What about the y-intercept? Care about there's a sign that goes with the four. Negative. It's a negative, right? The sign always goes with the number that's next to it. So y-intercept is negative 4. Okay. Any question on that one? Okay. Let's look at this one. y equals negative 2x. Is that in slope-intercept form? Yes. It is. What? You're missing something, right? You should have plus or minus, and there should be a number right there, but they didn't put it. If they don't put it, then that means 
it's a zero. You don't have to put plus zero because think about if you add zero to something, does that change it? No. So the way it was written was slope intercept form. I just put the plus zero so then you can do these two things a little easier. What's the slope in B? Negative two. And what's the y intercept? Zero. Again, on the test, you want to get used to seeing it like that. If you want to put the plus zero in to help you, you can, but you'd see it like this. Questions on that? Okay, let's look at this one. y minus 3 equals 1 third x. Is that in slope-intercept form? No. No, something's wrong with it. What's, what's wrong with it? The y isn't by itself, all right? So what's, what's with the y that we don't want? Negative. negative 3. So I get to do the opposite of a negative 3, which is what? Positive 3. Plus 3. Plus 3. What's negative 3 plus 3? Zero. Zero. That's gone. What's on the left-hand side now? 3, 1 half. Just the left. 1 third x. Oh. Just the left. Oh, sorry. Just y. All right? Y equals. Y equals. Now, what's on the right-hand side that we didn't move? That just stayed right where it was. The 1 third x. x. What else is over there with it now, Lamka? Plus 3. Plus 3. So, how do you... So, is that slope-intercept form? Mm -hmm. Yes. Now we're ready to answer that question. What is my slope? Mm -hmm. One third. And what's my y-intercept? Positive three. You don't have to put a plus three. If you did that, it's not wrong. But usually we only put the symbol in front if it's negative. Any question on that? So we get some practice problems, Roy. Yeah. All right. So keep your um, keep your guided notes out. A couple of quick reminders. I think we said most of them yesterday. Um, homework tonight, three point five, part one. Progress reports because of the double shock week close on Friday. It's not the end of the term. You still got a couple more tests. So this this is the halfway point. Blake is not gonna. It's still gonna affect your grade. Yeah, we still have more tests to come. So we've had one test. This Friday is the second test, so only two tests on progress reports. Yeah, so that test you went back yesterday it didn't do so well. You want to make sure you know you take some time. I'll be after school on Thursday. If anyone wants to stay to get to study, get their reference sheet set to go. Well, the test review will be here. And then reference sheet for you, for you guys. It's going to be posted by um, tomorrow night. Okay, so that'll be on Google Classroom. So if you need to print it out, I know sometimes people say I didn't get to print it. Well, it'll be online. We'll have a chance to print it in school or um, print it at home if you can. All right. So keep that sheet out, and we'll take a look at some uh, some.